Welcome to the shop everyone. Today we're going to be installing a Cloy's quick button timing cover. Now, some of these engines, these older engines that didn't come with roller cams, uh, it's always been somewhat of a, a pain to keep the cam walk down on them. Now, I have more experience with a small block Chevy engine, and I know that thin uh, steel pan would flex back and forth. And, and you could buy a water pump that had like threads on the bottom that would you could screw into the pan to support it better. But anyways, uh, this Cloy's timing cover looks like a really nice piece. And I've never installed one before. So let's get started and kind of see what we run into. I'll have to tighten up those oil plugs. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around to get the mark to the top. Now we have already degreed the cam in a previous video so we know what the intake center line is going to be. And I'm also going to have to install, install the camshaft. Now this camshaft here is a comp cam. It is a solid roller but it's sort of their street version solid roller. So it's not like the billet cam, solid roller, you know, racing cam. And so let's get some assembly lube on that camshaft. Screw my little installation tool I made to help support the cam as I roll it into the block or try not to scrape up the cam bearings. So here we go, let's see how I do. so far now here's the hard part ah that went well and there's that little tool that you can make you know that helps you out helps you support it a little bit better all right so the next thing I want to do is I want to soak my timing chain in some oil for a little while so I just cut off the bottom of a mineral spirits can I had gonna fill that up with some oil and let it soak there for a little bit all right all right so I bought some ARP cam bolts and I just think ARP you know products that have right now just really nice pieces and I I like using them where I can so let's get them unpacked and and you'll find later in the video there's some things I have to do to those cam bolts to uh, make them work how I want them to work so let's get some of that uh, ARP assembly lube on those bolts and install the timing chain now, it never seems to fail for me anyways that if I install something completely, torque everything down and don't do all the checks I probably should have done is I'll probably end up taking it back apart. And you'll see that I run into a few issues that I just want to address before I do the full installation. So let's torque it down. And so another thing I like to do is a lot of times I like putting parts on the engine with no gasket and kind of check for clearance. Kind of see how much room I have without a gasket. And then you know if it clears without a gasket, however thick that gasket is, you know you have at least that much clearance. And what I found with the cover, that those bolt heads were a little bit tall. So I'm gonna machine the top off a little bit and to keep from marring up my threads, I just screw a couple nuts on there and stick it in my lathe and machine it off that way. That way I'm not marring up the threads on those very nice bolts. And even machining those bolts the way the steel comes off, you can just tell it's a, a quality quality steel. 
I like the uh, ARP product for sure. Break that edge a little bit, make it a little bit nicer. Ah, perfect. All right, so now I want to put the front gasket on the engine, and I use some kind of contact cement, uh, weather stripping glue, something like that, to tack it in place. That looks good. All right, so let's put the cover on there and see what we got. And the cover did come with all the bolts to bolt it on, cover bolts, side bolts. Um, now the front seal, I had to use the front seal out of my gasket set for the engine, but you know, that's, that's normal, I think. The only thing about the cover I wish that it had come with is advertised it had like a raised casting of cloys on it and uh, when I got mine anyways it didn't have that but either way it's gonna work really looks like a really good piece so the button itself rides on the camshaft keeps it from walking back and forth and the clearance with the shoulders of the bolts is so close that the front of the button spins with the engine but the back of the button stays stationary in that cover so I'm gonna machine off the shoulders a little bit on those bolts just to give me that extra clearance because I don't know how concentric everything is Alright, so I have it all installed. Let's put that button in there and see if we got clearance. Oh yeah, plenty of clearance now. So everything's torqued down and marked. Let's put that front cover on there. Now the front cover has an O-ring that goes around the outside to seal it. So we're just gonna put those button head nuts on there, or bolts. Now as far as setting the camshaft in play, what they say in instructions is all you have to do is screw that button in until you don't have any in play. So here you see cam moves back and forth. So we'll screw that front button in until there's not any in play. And they say when the engine heats up that the cover being aluminum will give it the clearance that you need so let's screw it in there check the cam see if we have an in play all right that's good so let's put that front bolt on there all right so I am very pleased with the cover. I think it's a well thought out piece. So anyways, on the next video, we're gonna be putting on a crank scraper, installing the windage tray, installing the oil pump, and also the oil pan. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like, Please share it, ring the bell, subscribe if you would like to, and we hope to see you all on the next project. Hey, thanks so much.